This is the second video as part of a three part series where I spent two hours talking to Tristan about Viz extensions and the Figma to Tableau capability that he's building. In this video, we talk about his journey to becoming a developer in the Tableau space, becoming a Tableau partner, and how he's built up his skills over the last decade to be able to enable him to take advantage of the opportunity that Tableau is making available through the Tableau developer program. This is a long discussion. Uh, be sure to check out the previous uh, video as well if you haven't done so. Um, and as ever, let's get stuck in. Tristan, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Everything good. Thank you. And you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, I know you've been traveling the world a little bit, but you're finally back in the Netherlands. We finally have a chance to talk about some of the amazing stuff you're doing. Yeah, I think we have been trying a few times to plan this and it was always yeah. like either you or me not available. But uh, yeah, yeah, this this year it's a bit hectic in terms of where we are. And but yeah. like, I mean, my setup, people who <laughs> who have met me or saw, saw my video, they, they recognize yeah. the background. I'm home. Uh, Good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's important actually to have some, some familiar face to have a good conversation because I think you can kind of be out of sorts when you're um, in a place you're not familiar with. And also sometimes you just want to come across sort of relaxed and, you know, personally, this is where I like to record and you're where like, you like yeah. to record. So this is no doubt going to be a great conversation. When I um, when I reached out to you, I, I've reached out to you so many times over the years, but more recently it's it's been like dead focused on all the awesome stuff that you've been building with Jessica and your team. So I guess before we get into that, obviously that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. Mm -hmm. It'd be good for people to understand your journey. Like how did you get to where you are? Obviously I think not many people know maybe about your iron viz experience, but maybe you can mm -hmm. plot your journey from mm -hmm. that to where you are today. So I think even before iron viz, it's, it's a bit interesting because, um, there, there is what I study. My yeah. master was yeah. um, IT, was engineering school, mm -hmm. like uh, really computer science, right? right? So I learned to to code really since I'm 18. I started my my first like um, uh, post graduate. I don't know how you call it, like uh, after what you once you graduate, yeah, um, post graduate high school, uh, and then I started directly coding. And after some time, it was like. Once I graduated, I was like, okay, maybe coding is not what I want to do. I was not necessarily <laughs> super um, into making websites or those kind of things. Right. It was not my, my main interest. But I really liked um, everything around data. And also, usually what I try to explain is like really for me, our job, um, data visualization is really the combination of like data, yeah. the IT kind of, and design, right? Yeah, and I always exactly. love the design aspect. And I think for most people, they, they like really math, uh, like mathematics and, and IT, but not necessarily design. Some people really like design, but not necessarily the technical part. And for me, it's like, yeah. like I like a bit of everything. Yeah. And that's why I started working in data visualization, right? So right. I put coding aside. I was like, okay, that is not for me. I don't want to code anymore. Yeah. And then I started working in a consulting company, just making Tableau. So I discovered Tableau 2015. Nice. Then two years later, I went to Aaronviz. Still super focused on Tableau, like really ju just BI, right? Yeah. Also a bit of data, data um, engineering, like Alteris, those kind of things. But that was also not my thing. I was really data visualization. Right. Um, and yeah, after after the Iron Viz, I started to work for another company, like a startup, where right. in that startup, it was still really focused data viz and Tableau. But I started to work with other engineers, like other Programmers Developers. that were yeah, using yeah. D3, JavaScript, and ah. other tools. And I could start to see the limitation of Tableau when say, can you make this a rounded corner? I will, uh, no, I don't, I cannot do rounded corners. Okay, can you make this a gradient? Uh, no, I can, <laughs> like, those kind of things, right? And it was yeah. feeling a bit of frustration. And I think it's really, yeah, after some, some time, I was like, okay, it's not that I don't want to work with Tableau anymore, but I want to, to complete or to... Yeah, add more, more, uh, more skills, more knowledge, more yeah. tools to mm -hmm. what I already know, right? And, right? and not necessarily go in a different direction, but more complete what I am able to do. So I think at this point, um, I started to learn Figma for the more UI part, mm -hmm. more the, the programming, like JavaScript to be able to code more and kind of build on top of Tableau and be, okay, Tableau is not everything I can try to add different bricks to make data yeah. visualization even better. 
Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, I um, started working as a freelance, like full-time freelance right? Um, for two years mm -hmm. where I was just doing Tableau consulting for clients. Nice. And then again, that's where my, I think my, my early beginning kind of to started to come back and I started to code again right. product for the community. Uh, initially, it was just the Advis, so yeah. that tool that a lot of people have used by now that allow you to make just advanced visualization for free and just have Not it in Tableau. But yeah. it was completely a, just a, a fun project, and I think <laughs> that people enjoy it a lot. And then I said, okay, this is something that, that works, that people like. Maybe I can try to replicate that for other aspects of Tableau that are more business focused so yeah. not so much table public but uh, issue that people have when they, they need to create a dashboard for for their company yeah. and then make product out of it and then since last year jessica joined me so now we are just a team of two we are just two people um and we split our time between um consulting we still do consulting a bit mm -hmm. um it, it's uh we develop our product we build our product and the the third thing that we try to do is um, kind of content, uh, and around that, I mean, Tableau, uh, YouTube video, right. uh, but also mostly currently a weekly newsletter. So every week we send a, a, an email, um, to let people know what we have built. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's it, good. I'm on it. So, I'm on it. I enjoy it. <laughs> so that's the complete journey from 2015 to today. Passing it's incredible. It's incredible. Stage. It's basically a decade summarized in like two minutes. <laughs> but the, the 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 thing I want to highlight is there there's so many interesting things about that journey. Number one, um, in 2014, many of the tools you use today didn't exist, right? So yeah, your exactly. journey sort of started and it met with these technologies as they were sort of coming about. And then mm. the other thing, I, I think you, you skirted over and I, I think you, it's probably yeah, because you're a humble person, but two years from starting Tableau to winning Ironviz, that's that's an incredible like timeline, right? So like, but, yeah, go for it, go for it. You would say that, but actually a lot of competitors, yeah. like even in the recent, I yeah. think more in the recent years than before. True, before it was true, like, very okay, true. Known, yeah. Yeah. known visionary Zen master. Now, yeah. recently, it has been a lot of people who have been tab doing Tableau for sometimes six months, a year or two. Just, yeah. Like it's much more. And I think maybe it's because when you start, you also have a bit of a more Passion. blank page in your mind. Yeah. And you'll yeah, be yeah. like, yeah, I can be a bit more creative. I can try things that are yeah. not in the normal standard code. It's true. The visualization that I did to compete to the final, the one about the rainforest, yeah. it was when I saw, saw it to some people at the beginning, I said, that is too crazy. Like people are not <laughs> going to like it. Is There is too many images. It, it's too yeah. confusing. Yeah. And be, because it was something that was, it, it was different, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think when you are early, in your early stage of doing Tableau or, whatever tool you are in that mindset of of not being afraid to break the rules right or yeah you are exactly yeah and i think the thing I, I like even with other tools every time that I, you learn a new tool you really create new connections in your brain and you sure. are you are kind of thinking in a different way right and exactly. i think that's why also learning different different tools and trying to is not just good because you learn new skills but it's also huh now i can do this that way and you're yeah. a bit less afraid of breaking things that, that's that's kind of how I, how I feel it it's true and you're kind of you're benefiting from the momentum as well right there's a, there's an energy and a passion and momentum that kind of keeps you pushing and it's interesting because i think your journey also highlights that you've ridden that momentum, right? When you, when you, when you did Iron Viz, you took on a new challenge. You just didn't sort of try and keep doing more of the same. You, you were constantly looking for new ways of taking your skills a little bit further. And, you know, you, you, you passed the, the, the path of developers multiple times, but that knowledge came back to, to, to your advantage sort of more recently. And you brought all those things, that sort of journey you've been on has been kind of leading you to where you are today. You've brought all of those skills to the table now and you brought your passion your skills with iron viz your design capability understanding that people find some of the things that are really cool difficult um mm. but then in a business context actually these things can tell a story and you've found a way to kind of bring that into into the mindset so that that's that's an incredible um journey and i think it it, it 
it links nicely to the next point, which is if we sort of focus in on Tableau, how much has Tableau done to sort of enable that journey, right? Because I think when we were learning Tableau, you know, going back to, I don't know, version six, seven, eight, whatever it was, a lot of the stuff today just wasn't possible. So could you talk a bit about how sort of Tableau has enabled, you know, what you're doing today and where you think that's going? We can have more of an open conversation about that first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think initially it is more um, Tableau's lack of something that mm -hmm. was pushing me to build stuff, right? Right. And initially, the the advice to create advanced visualization is because mm -hmm. that was like there was no easy way to do it. You either needed to follow like a template with ten steps and make a lot of calculation <laughs> and densification. Yeah. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to have a simple mm -hmm. that you drag your you you put your data, you download, you have you have all the calculation done, right? So initially, it was more because Tableau was not having some things. Uh, the same for the our tool that allowed to generate KPI. Mm -hmm. It was it annoys me so much when I need to make those KPI cards in Tableau because you have so many calculations to yeah. do. It's like how can yeah. I fix that? But now it's true that I think, especially with the Viz extensions, and I don't know if um, like I think it's also maybe a strategy of Tableau at this point to kind of give more tools to developers and yes. you can see the data dev side of Tableau is taking more importance. Yes. Like in, in a f like the June 20, we will have the data dev day again. Yeah. So developers being able to talk about what they are, they are doing. And we see more and more API allowing people to build on top. Yeah. And I think uh, really the, when we started to make those advanced visualization generator, uh, for free, it was always kind of, and we received this message a lot. How can I use your tool in my in yeah. in my dashboard for my company to have yeah. a sunk that refresh? And I, we, you cannot because we don't have the tools to do that. Correct. And now with these extensions, it's uh, the the new API that that Tableau released, like we re release really soon. It allowed us to to make that connection that was missing between. Right code and the data that you drag and wrap, right? Right. So I think it's um, it's a bit of both, right? It's, it's always trying to build something that doesn't exist in Tableau. Yeah. And the more tools we have that allow us to build those things, the better. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's an interesting journey. And I think if I step back and I just look at Tableau generally, I think they have been for the last maybe four or five years. And it starts really with Adam Solipsky, I think. You know, when he joined from AWS, I think he he maybe brought a bit of the thinking that we see in AWS, which is you take a product that you use internally, you package it and you turn it into an API so that your customers can use it to develop their own tools and systems. And I think it's maybe a, I don't know if Tableau was already on this path before he joined or if it's something that he accelerated, but fundamentally, it's very clear that from that point onwards, we started to see what I would say the groundwork for some of the thinking we're seeing today. So Tableau really taking itself seriously as a platform. And I know, I know, like if you go Google Tableau, every, the first thing that comes to people's mind is desktop, right? Every, when you see Tableau mm -hmm. developer roles, what really people are talking about is Tableau desktop. And I, 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 you know, I make videos about Tableau and it kind of hurts me a little bit because I, I see this problem, which is growing more and more where Tableau desktop is becoming an increasingly smaller part of the bigger mm -hmm. picture of what's possible. It's still the primary tool. It's still the primary vessel, but the platform now is so powerful, so big. There's so much more mm -hmm. to Tableau than just desktop. Um, and, and so, yeah, yeah. And and I think to, to, to your point, there is that, that feeling comes from the fact that there is a, um, this like uh, like I don't know the correct word to express that, but there is too much of a difference between how much Tableau Desktop is still used, yes. and that is what people use, and how much communication and new features arrive to the platform. If yes. you go to the recent <laughs> TC, the yeah. number of time we actually talk about Tableau Desktop capabilities for people to build things was really low, right? And yeah. we cannot yeah. expect that necessarily from a Tableau from the main keynote, yeah. but still, right? Very and I and be like, this is still what people use every day. And Pulse and those kind of things are good addition for some people. But for yeah. the big majority of the people who are who 
are you, is are using Tableau since a uh, few years. Yeah. Tableau Desktop is what I use every day. Like, yeah. there is no one day I think that I don't open Tableau Desktop to make something, right? Exactly, exactly. So, and I think this is where the, the new vision, the fourth wave, as they like to call it from Tableau, I think this is secretly what this is trying to actually address, which is let's decouple, and no, Tableau used this term decouple quite a few times over the last years as well. So I, I sound like I, I eat, sleep, drink Tableau, but I'll use the term Tableau terminology. Let's decouple Tableau desktop from the Tableau experience, right? Mm -hmm. So this fourth wave is actually about taking the best of desktop, the best of prep, the best of uh, data management and putting it into one experience by the looks of things, right? So that you just call it Tableau and everything you talk about is just Tableau. At the moment, it's it's so, so many disparate products, but really fundamentally, people have an affinity with just one product. Um, and it also speaks to the other problem, which I'll also say now, which is the majority of the people who use Tableau don't use desktop, right? <laughs> which is kind of interesting, right? When you're consuming Tableau, when you're on your phone, when you're on your tablet, when you're just reading reports, that is the bigger body of users. So Tableau is in this sort of weird place where they're trying to address that audience, right? The people who consume data, they're trying to bring them into this sort of, let's say Nirvana that we've had as desktop and developers, but it's a difficult one because in order to do that, you do have to sort of turn your back a little bit to your heritage and say, look, okay, I know developers, you know, you want all these great features, but we also now have to start sort of striking a balance. And that, that I think has been the toughest thing for the community, broadly speaking, because as we, you and I know, there's so many things in that feature list <laughs> that have been there for decades that we haven't gotten. <laughs> yes. So it's a really tough, tough balance to strike. Um, but I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I get, I get your point of the like Tableau from the people who are like, yes, you say a Tableau user, but actually people who are going to the conference and people who are cheering yeah. for things are not the majority of the Tableau user, right? right? Mm -hmm. Of course, mostly are like viewers or even if I, I would say right now it's embedded into your website exactly. and you will see a Tableau, but you will see you will like a know. visualization yeah. that is a Tableau visualization, but you don't yeah. necessarily need to know it is not, is not the point. So in that aspect, I think it's a good idea to be like, well, there is a platform where people can, make visualization or make analysis, like visualization. I, I say a lot of visualization because that's my thing, but I think now Tableau is bigger than just visualization, yeah, right? Yeah. Can make analytical or can analyze their data or visualize it. And then people can consume it, yeah. but not necessarily, they don't necessarily need to know that it's Tableau, the people Correct. who consume it, right? Yeah. So, and I think in, in that regard, that for example, um, I'm also a bit in a Figma space and I can yes, see the yes. difference in, in the different layers, right? And Figma is really, we talk only to the people who are designing, right? Correct. The designers. Yeah. The end user. Not a feature. It's yeah. like, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, you can show things to them, but it's not about, it's, it's not, no, or if they have a point to say, it's like more about the collaboration. And, hey, change this. Change. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. This yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a, an easier, I think approach when you you are you make a tool for creators compared to Tableau when it's a it's a global platform for analytical people, right? Mm -hmm. Most people will need to read, uh, to consume, to create, to yeah, there is it's a bit more or to even data engineer now with Tableau Prep and everything. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's interesting because it is a challenge about focus and where do you choose to spend your time and um if you're twenty years old, you can't ignore the past, but also the future is coming really quickly and you've got to pay attention to that that as well. So yes. I, I leave it to the product managers to, to fix that problem. You and I can mm -hmm. can chat all day we want. We don't have to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So no, no, no. <laughs> I guess but that's good. To, to, that, put to that point, I think <laughs> seeing that now there is more API and more tools for yeah. developers, external exactly. developers to build things is also a way for, for, I think, them to be like, well, we cannot continue to have our hands yeah. in all of these things. Every point. Like people, people want more uh, charts type mm -hmm. for a very long time, right? Since I'm starting using Tableau, people say, uh, I should not have to make a dual axis with circles to make a, a donut <laughs> chart, right? I yeah. should be, have the, these kind of things. People yeah. have been saying that for a long time. So it's also them acknowledging, I think, okay, we are not going to do it because yeah. Tableau's 
resource is now to other area than yeah. pure visualization. But if we allow devs, external developers, I mean, to, to build it, then, then that's good for, for us also. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a narrative that Tableau, I think have started in lots of different ways. We have things like the Tableau exchange. We've had the data dev community was really the first part of that, right? The exchange is almost part two, give the developers yeah. somewhere where they can share mm -hmm. what they need. It feels like we're finishing act two and we're now about to start act three, where the tools the developers have built have a platform. And now those tools are about to go out to the community and the ecosystem is about to be sort of not finished, but it's about to have the first sort of moment in 24.2 through Viz extensions, but also some of the other things that we've been seeing over the years as well, just culminating in where we are today. So um, super exciting, really exciting. <laughs> I guess it's now, it's probably a good time now to, to, to come to sort of what you're doing. And before we do that, I think it's really important to sort of touch on something, which is in the last year and a half, every week I open my Twitter feed or LinkedIn feed, I see a chart not posted by you, but has been enabled mm -hmm. by you. And it's been, it's been absolutely incredible to see you've basically brought the, the, you know, the hearts and minds of people who've been really frustrated with the design capabilities in Tableau, the ability to do things and tell stories that, that, uh, you know, they wanted to tell for so long. And I think even your, your ad disc, uh, thing, as soon as you released that, I, I saw 10, 20 visits where people just quickly did something that they, they wanted to do for a while, but just couldn't be bothered to look at, you know, not yeah. couldn't be bothered, couldn't be bothered as harsh, but the effort to, to do that was not justified. Right. It's not, and I'm part of these people. Like the the fun, <laughs> funny thing is, like I have never made uh, a visualization, like an yeah. advanced visualization, in the way of data densification, table <laughs> calculation, <laughs> <Still>. <laughs> and, like because like for me, it always sounded so so much work, kind of, to achieve something, and mm -hmm. knowing a bit of programming, yeah. Like if you want to, if you want to use these three to make a sunk is is it feels much more easier, right? Yeah. yeah. People are afraid of code usually. Like people see that and be like, oh, that's complicated. But I swear it's easier than having to go through all of the steps to make a sunky and these kind of things, right? So yeah. for me, it's like, no, I'm going to skip that part and directly try to 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 make it. And the, the first visualization was a, the network diagram. Yeah. Yeah. The very first that I did in 2019 was a network. And it was just like, a network is even more simple because it's just circles and lines. Yes, Tableau yeah. can do circles and lines. It's just how do we calculate the position of the circles and the lines, right? Correct. So I use these three to calculate those positions mm -hmm. and then say, okay, now I have the X and the Y coordinates. Tableau, please make put circles and put lines at those coordinates and it and made the... Okay, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's interesting how you break that down as well because... Although you didn't do that identification and you essentially didn't go through the mathematics of making that happen, you kind of did it through another way. You did it through programming and you just took what you needed, which was the output. And then you just, you, you gave it to Tableau as is. And so I think this, you know, there are going to be people watching this who want to get into development or think development is a very big, you know, difficult thing. Actually, you know, your journey should act as an example to people that first you start by breaking down the problem. And then mm -hmm. you take each of those parts and you apply it to something that you already know. So you don't have to go and rebuild VizQL or, you know, uh, the render no. engine. You just need to understand how Tableau works. And dare I say with chat GPT today, I mean, <laughs> people, people can get very far. Even I've, I've had crazy, crazy results building, uh, things that I just, I don't think I could have built a year and a half ago, had it not been for things like chat GPT. So you can get very close to what you want. Yeah. And then on top of that, you've got people like yourselves in the data dev community who you can get into a Slack, you can get into a meeting with, and uh, you can ask those questions and even Tableau themselves put developers there. And before you know it, if you're just persistent, you can actually pull together something like add this, right? Which just lets people mm -hmm. build something. And then once you've solved that problem, the next mountain isn't so big anymore. It's like you're already halfway up, right? And then you just keep going. And next thing you know, 
um, you've got uh, La Data Viz, uh, Mark II or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really brick by, like, that is the thing, it's brick by brick. At the beginning, yeah. the, the, the very first version of Adviz was really just that, was, okay, if I put my data and I export it in a CSV, it yeah. does something. Okay, now what if I make a UI where people can put the data and then it returns the CSV, right? The, the, the calculated data. Yeah. And then I get, well, if I already have the calculated data, why do I not put it already in a pre, like a pre-rendered kind of yeah. dash, uh, workbook? Yeah. So when you click on download, it doesn't give you the data, but it gives you the workbook that has that data inside. And yeah. then suddenly, so okay, that well, that works. Okay, now what if I make it a bit more, more beautiful? What if yeah. I put this and that? So people see the result that we have right now and be like, wow, that is um, that is incredible. You have yeah. done a lot, but it's also like just years of weekly small incremental change, right? Yeah. Every and I think that's that's what people say. No, like you 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 over, yeah. You usually underestimate how much you can do in in a year or something. Yeah. Like, and that's completely true. It's like yeah, on a weekly basis, I feel that we our progress are really slow. Like yeah. extremely slow. I, I like. We should have been able to do much more than that. Yeah. But then you look back from a year, two years ago, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, no, we have done a lot, right? So it, yeah. it's always that kind of difficult. Um, yeah. yeah. That 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 phrase you said, I heard it for the first time in the context of Apple. Um, the the developer, Apple developer, was saying that you tend to overestimate short term progress and you underestimate yes. long term yeah. gains, and yeah. and it's it, it just really hit me. And it's like, yes, that that is exactly that is nearly always the way with these sort of great accomplishments you see out in you know on LinkedIn, wherever people have been chipping away at these things for for, for quite some time. And I, I think. Again, I've I've had the privilege of watching your journey throughout the years. I think many people have maybe only discovered you in the last, you know, um, mm -hmm. two years. Uh, like data viz has probably only landed in people's inbox for the last uh, year and a half. But it's really hard to forget that you've been on that journey for, for quite some time. So if anyone is out there thinking, how do I start? I think you just, just listen to Tristan, what he's doing now and get started because you never know where it will end up. <laughs> And and I would what you you your point about ChatGPT it was completely true. We would not have we would be maybe halfway without yeah. ChatGPT at, at that time because yeah. yeah to make product online and to there is so many small components and Correct. it's really hard to know everything. So usually yeah. that's why also we can only afford to be just two. Yeah. Because actually, we are not a team of two. We are a team of three if you count chat GPT, right? It is an active <laughs> member of our team. Maybe right? five, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It counts maybe for, for, for more than one more people. But like it, it's, it's true that when you want to try a new API, when we started to build the Figma plugin, mm. it's like, well, it's a brand new world of the Area, Figma. Yeah. How, how do you start, right? And, and then re really be able to have... To have um, a way to have answers yeah. to your question, but specific answers, right? Not not what you find on Google necessarily, but like, hey, I have this specific code that I want to kind of try to 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 build. Yeah. Can you can you guide me through or tell me why it's not working? And I mean, it's it's really really helping us a lot. Good, good, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, people underestimate the power of those tools. I think, you know, you think it's a chatbot. I don't use it as a chatbot at all. I use it as a way of mm -hmm. making my mind think. I use it as a troubleshooter. I, I rarely use the 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 answers or Google search-like capabilities. That That's mm -hmm. a sort of a different world. But anyway, look, we, we've talked a lot. I know people are...